Hello, Internet. Welcome to Weekly MTG. I'm one of your hosts, Blake. I'm also here. I'm Steve. Steve's also here. I'm always also here. Also, also here. Also, also here. Is Gavin Verhey. Hey, guys. Good to be here. Hey, hey Gavin. How you doing? You excited for some Brawl today? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. We're going to actually be playing Brawl with, with, with Gavin. one of the creators of the format. Yeah. One of. Um, it, it was kind of a team effort, and it came from a, a play group that uh, works here at Wizards of the Coast. But anyway, we'll get into all that later. Uh, we're going to take a bunch of your questions for Gavin about the Brawl format. He's going to play it. Uh, we're going to talk through a lot of the cards, a lot of the design, a lot of the intention behind it. We're going to take your questions about all of that or, or anything if you want to throw it in chat. I'll be watching. We'll give them to Gavin. Uh, but we're going to start out, as we do every show now. Every show. Steve does the news. I'm going to do the news, you guys. News. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We do need a theme song for we Steve. We do. Does we'll, we'll, get one, we'll get one done. Yeah. Uh, Sean, let's go to my single. <laughs> it's too much power we've given him. Sugar Spice, everything nice, Throne of Eldraine announcements kicked off this week uh, with a pretty massive amount of info and, of course, card previews. Uh, we debuted an incredible trailer. I would encourage you to go check it out on the Magic the Gathering YouTube page. Got some really great response from our community. Thank you so much. But the thing that most people were excited about, card previews. We had some pretty cool cards come on out. Let's go to the graphic. That's right. Here's a small selection of some of the incredible cards shown earlier this week, including, of course, the return of Garrick, Cursed Huntsman this time, uh, as well as the new Planeswalker, Oko, who had a really excellent response from the community as well. Uh, plus, players got to see a whole new selection of showcase frames and art that you can see depicted on those two adventure cards, Lovestruck Beast and Flaxen Intruder. If you want to know about how adventures work in Throne of Eldraine, you can check out the mechanics article on dailymtg.com. And to hear more about how alternate frames can be obtained in booster packs, we're going to go to Steve Does the News correspondent, Blake Rasmussen. <laughs> Blake. Uh, second fiddle in Steve Does the News. Okay, I'm going to interject here on, uh, on Steve's behalf. So we've seen a lot of questions about where you can get what cards, when, how. So I'm going to break down exactly where you can get the alternate treatments and the different variations. So let's go throw those back up, the images that we just had up there. Those, coincidentally, the borderless planeswalkers and the alternate versions of adventures, coincidentally can all be found in the same place in your normal draft booster. So the draft booster is going to contain your normal kind of 15 cards and then some uh, are going to contain these beauties. Uh, nope, not those beauties. Those two, okay, yep, stay here. Uh, so your normal pet, your normal draft pack, you can open the Borderless Garrick, the Borderless Oko, and you can open these adventures as well. One slight twist is that the common adventures, uh, none of which are up here, but there are common adventures, they show up only as foils in the draft booster. So that's the little twist. You can get uncommon, rare, and if there are any mythic adventures in the draft booster, but you uh, cannot get the common non-foils in the draft booster. So now let's go to the next one. So these are the extended art rares and mythics. So basically if a card in the set is a rare and mythic, rare or mythic, and does not have the planeswalker frame or is not an adventure, so just kind of your sort of generic, exciting, but not adventurous rares or mythics, those can only be found in the collector booster. And the collector boosters, though available worldwide, uh, will only be published in English and Japanese. So that's why if you're looking at the variant card image gallery for Throne of Eldraine in a language that's not English or Japanese, you're going to see some English cards sprinkled in there, that's because those cards only exist in English or Japanese. So a couple things about the Collector Booster, because the Collector Booster is new. Uh, so the Collector Booster is going to have a number of slots. Now I would encourage you to, we're going to show the article a little bit later when we talk about it, but Mark Rosewater wrote an article back in July all about Project Booster Fund. So if you Google MTG Booster Fund, uh, you'll find Mark Rosewater's article right at the top. And at the time, a lot of that was tough to parse because we didn't have the examples. Now we have all the examples. So I would encourage you to read that article and look back through it. Uh, and I'm going to talk through some of the terminology that he used that will make it a little bit clearer. 
So when he uses the word showcase in that article, that is referring to the adventure frames. So anytime he uses the word showcase, you can just mentally insert adventure frames for this set. Obviously, showcase frames will be different for future sets, but they mean adventures when you're talking about Throne of Eldraine. Uh, the extended art are the rares and mythics, like Rankle that we just saw, and then the borderless planeswalkers are obviously Garrick and Oko. And a third planeswalker to be named later. Uh, so, the collector booster. Let's talk about what's in that. Uh, you will get in that booster one extended art rarer mythic. So, any rarer mythic uh, in the set that is extended art. Uh, you will get one foil rarer mythic that can include regular versions and the special treatments. So, the uh, extended art or the variant uh, frame. You will get nine foil commons and uncommons. Again, those will include also the showcase frames. You'll get three non-foil cards in special frames. And you will get one ancillary card, so that can include anything from any of our non-booster releases. So, Planeswalker decks, the Planeswalker deck, wait, Planeswalker decks, Brawl decks, uh, buy a box you can get in that slot. Uh, and then there's going to be one foil token. So hopefully that clears things up a little bit. And these are yes. also the only place that the foil tokens and, yes. yep. and the non-foil um, ancillary cards appear, uh, if they only appear in foil somewhere else. So yes. two-lane teller of tales, foil in the brawl deck, you're going to go get the non-foil one in, in the, the collector, collector booster. booster which is and that, yes, and so that's where the common non-foil adventures are also going to be found only in the collector boosters. Absolutely. Yep. Lots of cool stuff in there. Lots of cool stuff in there. Uh, hopefully, let's let's put up those two graphics one more time, just to, and then we'll let Steve finish the news. So this represents the stuff you can get in the draft booster, and the next one, these are only available in the collector booster. So there's your your quick and simple version of where to get the alternate versions. And, and, and if you didn't parse all that, there's a lot to take in there's here. There's a lot to take in. And what our goal was when we were designing these was to just make the collector booster an awesome collection of yep. stuff. You crap, yes, there's some rules about what drops where and how much of each thing you get, but at the end of the day, you open it, you're just looking at gorgeousness. Foils and blinged out cards, unique mm -hmm. stuff you can't find anywhere else. So yes, everything Blake said is accurate. And if you couldn't quite keep it all in your head, don't worry, go open a collector booster. It will blow your mind. I've opened one. It is so cool. We're going to open one on stream oh, baby. in a couple Later. weeks as well. Yeah. Later. Yeah. Yep. That was special correspondent Blake Rasmussen explaining <laughs> the different types of frame treatments Back you can get in Throne of Eldraine. <laughs> Thank you, Blake. And gust of wind, Gavin. On and the Gavin, Gavin was also there. <laughs> yes. Uh, we also announced our whole standard legal product lineup for sets in 2020. Let's go to the graphic. Uh, Theros Beyond Death is going to come on up very soon. Of course, we've got Corset 2021 in there as well. Uh, of course, at 2021, not a huge surprise to anybody in the know, but I uh, returned to not one, but two beloved planes, not just with Theros Beyond Death, but also with Zendikar Rising at the end of the year, plus Ikoria, Layer of Behemoths, a new plane that we don't know anything about yet, just that it's going to be there next year. Uh, moving on to Core 2021 in Q3, and of course, wrapping up the year with Zendikar Rising. Another thing that debuted this week, The Wildred Quest by Kate Elliott. The ebook, in case you missed it, uh, by fan favorite author Kate Elliott, as I mentioned, it's now available for all fans to read and enjoy. You can order it now on Amazon, Apple Books, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, Google Play, and Kobo. You get the whole story for Throne of Eldraine before the official start of preview season, and I believe that's a first for Magic's story. Uh, moving on, the E League Showdown MTG Arena, presented by Intel Gamer Days, kicked off for its first week with its new format. Lot to digest there for fans of competitive Magic. Would encourage everybody to check out the great roster of players on the VOD on the E League's YouTube channel. It's up now with some great commentary from Marshall Sutcliffe and Cedric Phillips. And finally, the last part of our stream yesterday. One of the b uh, bigger surprises of yesterday's announcement stream was that a special Throne of Eldraine Brawl event is currently live on MTG Arena. You can get a preview of many of the new Brawl cards and a lot of previews of the main card set as well, all available there right now. So log on, get your game on, go play, earn play sets of some of the cool Throne of Eldraine uncommons while you're at it. Which brings us to the topic of today's show. Gavin is here for the Throne of Eldraine Brawl decks and the Brawl event in Magic the Gathering Arena. 
Hey everyone, yeah, so I am the, like the brawl and commander guy, and so I'm so excited one, one to second, be here. One sec, one sec. No. Go ahead. All right. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait till you like eat it next time, and like the time of that it explodes. Yeah, and it's right? very, anyway. It's variants, variants on, the, um, on a new thing. So yeah, I'm so excited that we finally have Brawl on MTG Arena. You know, back when we announced this thing with Dominaria, pretty early there were a lot of questions. Will this be on Arena? Will there be proc support for it? You know, all these things. And we took all that into account, kind of put it on ice while we could actually develop all of these things, and now it's here. It's a big launch with the Throne of Eldraine. We've got it on Arena. We've got the decks. Got one right here. Ooh, very exciting. Very nice. Um, very nice. And we even have a special in-store event coming a few weeks after Throne of Eldraine releases. So you can play it in stores. You can play it online. You can go out and buy it at your local local store. It's perfect. It's all coming up Brawl right now. Mm -hmm. And I've had a blast playing this event. I see uh, we're going to play on Blake's account here in a second. He's already, already collected all, all of his wins. So good work, Blake. <laughs> nice work, Blake. So Thanks. shall we, shall we uh, hop on? That was so in? unlikely that you you would have won that much. Shall we uh, hop on in and start playing some games? Let's do it. Mm. All right. So if we have time, we're gonna try and play through all the decks. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna start here with this fairy schemes, however. Fairy schemes. So this is white, blue, black, and it's led by a Layla. And so it's kind of one of the of the things you'll you'll see in these brawl decks is they kind of match themes from the set a little bit. And there's a little bit of an artifact and enchantment theme running throughout the set. And so um, Alayla has a ability that triggers whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment. You get to make a one-one little fairy token. So it's probably fine, right? Fairies never been a yeah, never been an issue. Yeah. Never never been an issue. Not never. once. I, Not once. I love this the screen they made up where it shows you what commander you're playing. It's super cool. And under here it says who you are. So we've got the mirror match to kick it off. So exciting. Ooh. There are a number of people in chat calling the band deck the best deck. So, you know what's funny? I've been monitoring the discussion pretty closely, and at some point or another, someone has told me that each of the decks is the best, and each of the, of the decks is the worst, mm -hmm. right? So, um, to me, that means we did our job well. <laughs> Look at that bag of holding value. Oh, there, I love Gavin. this opening hand right here. We've got Look at corridor that. monitor and bag of holding. Chemistry's Insight, you can discard the card and it goes under bag of holding. Mm -hmm. Oof. We've got Command Tower, too. Check yeah. out that new art on Command Tower. Definitely keeping this. You do get a free mulligan in Brawl, which is fantastic, but yeah, we're going to keep this gorgeous hand. You can see Alayla just hanging out over here, ready to be cast. With that, with that sweet aura around it. Not, of course, enchantment aura. But of course. And if you haven't seen the card before, fun. here you go. Four mana, two, three flying death touch lifelink. Pumps your other flyers and generates a fairy every time you cast an artifact or enchantment. And in this deck, um, I would say that generally kind of what's going on is you want to um, often, and you'll see me make a counterintuitive play here in a moment, Often you will hold your artifacts and enchantments to play them until you have a Layla on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, here I could cast this bag of holding, but I'm actually going to hold off on it. You're going to hold off on it? I, I'm... as soon as he said it, I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, it's holding. great. It's great. Put <laughs> uh, your jokes in chat. Gavin, I'm going to throw you a couple questions while you're playing that we're yeah. getting. Um, did you oh, guys look at him foolishly playing? Uh, look at them foolishly playing Golden Egg too early. Unbelievable. Calling calling out wow. your opponents on stream. Brave, wow. brave, brave, brave. Hey, oh, they succeeded immediately. Oh, okay. Oh, um, they knew the mistake. I'm sorry yeah. for calling you out. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Wow, <laughs> Gavin. The power of your and, words. And that, my friends, is how you get six wins in the brawl. Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's let's see. cue let's cue up with that Pretty one again. Go, play it again. Yeah. Well, well, you do All right. That. Let's roll it one more time. Okay. How many uh, times will people concede against? Us playing. Let's find out. <laughs> as we've soon got, as they we've gotten a couple questions is. about non-standard brawl, about brawl extending beyond standard. What are your thoughts on that, Gavin? Yeah, totally. I mean, first of all, I got to check out this hand. So hold on. <laughs> okay. Very important. Oh, this is one of my favorite sweet new cards. Super cool. Um, Vanish into Fable is great. Vanish into yeah. Fable is great. I yeah. Still think you should mulligan that yeah. hand. But. Yeah, probably. This guy's pretty nice. I don't know. You got two drop, three drop. Yeah, I'm gonna mulligan. The thing about when you have a free mulligan, it's so hard to not take it. It's just right. such value. It could be. Oh, now we got the witching well. Yeah, okay. This, this, is, this is great. Yeah. Frogify, Frogify is in the mirror match. Yeah. This is the key card. You've got to turn off their alert. Get them. So, uh, right. So, you know, I'm a huge player of Commander. Um, ooh, Kai's Wrath. Nice. Really? I didn't, I didn't know that about you. Yeah, huge player yeah. of Commander. I'm just going to go ahead and crack. Normally, would not crack this on my turn, but just for the sake of getting things rolling here, we're going to go ahead and crack it. Um, Big fan of Commander, big fan of uh, social formats, and I feel like if you want to play the anything is legal format, you've got that. You've got Commander, which is a wonderful format. Um, I think I'm going to, now normally I wouldn't uh, do this, but I'm going to play this Guild Globe just because I need to cantrip through and, and draw a card, which I know is exactly what I um, made fun of my opponent last time for doing, so I yeah. do apologize. It's but. fine, you're going to scoop immediately. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's, yeah. 
Um, but I gotta find that fourth land. Um, and so, that, ooh, Shrine Chaser. If you haven't seen this, this is a hot new card, too. Check There's your out. land. You did it. It's bigger and better. It's only 0 1 right now, though. Nothing to worry about. Yeah, I'll play this tap land. Famous last words, Gavin. Layla, Famous last words. Layla next turn. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so we have this format, Commander, if you want to be able to play anything. Brawl is a great chance to do something a little bit different. If you're newer into the game, if you just have some draft cards lying around, if you've only bought a handful of packs, you can build the Brawl deck, which is really, really great. Yeah, I have um, perfectly serviceable, though always get beaten by Blake, Brawl decks with draft commons. And uncommons. Well, and I think I think that's the, peep, the, the piece a lot of people miss, is that really this is an introductory format, maybe even before someone plays actual standard. If their collection is a lot of one ofs, they've drafted a little bit, or they bought a, a pre con of some kind and they're just building up their collection, it's much easier to have one of really cool cards than it is to have four of that you need for a format like Standard. Totally. But on the other hand, Brawl is also really fun. And so having it, it available for more experienced players is. Yeah, I, I just love having the variety. You know, another thing with Brawl is I love Commander, super love Commander, big fan of it. Um, but one, oh, smothering type, oh no. Uh, but one of the things about it that you definitely notice and I see a lot is that people's decks are at very different power levels. Yeah. And you sit down and play and it's like, oh, okay, you've got this really fast combo deck and I'm playing this my Weatherlight theme deck or something. And uh, yeah, okay, I'm not going to pay the two mana for this, fine. Um, and with Brawl, you have a much better chance of everything being on an even, even playing field, which yeah. is really, really nice. Um, there's a, a lower gap between them. So I wish I had another blue mana so I could play this Witching Well. I mean, you do. You, you have, have Guild, Guild Globe. Globe. I do have Guild Globe. You could convert Perfect. it. Yes, <laughs> let, let us convert. Check this out. Now this is how it's done. Careful, careful. Auto tapper. Oh. Whoops. Well, it's fine. It should fine. be it worked fine. out. Yeah. It all worked out. Um, the other question I've seen in chat, uh, and this one I'll take while Gavin concentrates on the Please game. Please go ahead. Why no arena codes in the Brawl deck? So this is really just a simple timing thing. When we were finalizing the contents of the Brawl deck, we were not sure exactly when Brawl would be on Arena. Uh, since this is the first time Brawl is coming to Arena, it's the first time Steve, Steve's making a face. Oh, the, the Gavin, Gavin's uh, scry <laughs> is, is, is very, very, very good. Strong. It's extremely strong. Uh, this is the first time we've done a Brawl product. We weren't 100% sure that those things were going to line up. And given that, uh, we didn't want to risk putting a Brawl code in there and it wasn't ready on Arena or vice versa. So uh, it was mostly a timing thing. It's definitely something we'll look at in the future. Right. If we were to do Brawl decks again, we would think about that for sure, right? Exactly. It's cool to find those synergies where possible. You yeah. know, I got asked the same question about Challenger decks a lot this year, too. And it's another thing. If we do another set of Challenger decks, we'd definitely think about it, right? Yep. So. But yeah, Arena is... is it is launching on the 26th of this month. September 26th. September 26th. Yeah. But we've still been in beta, and so there are a lot of things still getting worked out, and a lot of things as far ahead as you guys work in creating products. Arena's development time is, is on a different scale, and there, it doesn't always sync up to know exactly what's going to happen. And it's not as simple as, you know, I mean, first of all, I'm no programmer. Ooh, mm -hmm. he's being attacked, so I'm not going to block. Um, but you know, it, it takes a lot of work to get this to get this in here. Like the arena team has worked so tirelessly to make sure that uh, brawl would be playable. Oh no, frogified! Oh, you got frogified! Oh, oh. there go, there go all my planning plans. Um, to, they've worked so tirelessly to make sure that that um, that this could get rolling, and we we knew it would be out eventually. We did, did just you know, yeah. didn't know exactly when. So yep. All right, what are we doing here? Frogify! What a <laughs> what a blowout that is. Uh, I'm going to answer two other questions we got that are not brawl related, but I want to answer them because you ask them, and why not? So, so my strategy, by the way, with smothering tithe in this brawl format it's always the decline. is just always the decline. decline. Yeah. I Me and Steve played a great game where I, did, you yeah. had like a bajillion treasure tokens. I did. I think I, just, I had something like 20 treasure tokens. I just I kept drawing lands, but uh, it was fun. It was a good time. You did end up winning that game. I was. I think you were at three uh, to my like 20 or something like that, and you just ground me down. It was. It was ridiculous. Yep. Um, okay, again, on the codes things, how is it that, a uh, question in chat, how is it that Planeswalker decks from three sets ago are on Arena, but Brawl decks were too late? Because uh, the Brawl format is different. It requires a different set of rules for the game, whereas the Planeswalker decks were just additional cards. 
So it's a, again, it's a different time scale. We could easily say, yes, Planeswalker deck cards will be on Arena because that's just a matter of putting the cards on Arena. But Brawl decks, again, that requires programming in the Brawl format. Uh, the so Command Zone. The Command Zone, yeah. it's, it, it's a different story. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, the other questions I got that I wanted to make sure to answer are the borderless and adventure frames in foil, non-foil, or both. They are in both. Both. Uh, and then we had a specific question on Rankle. On Rankle, you do the abilities in the order printed on the card. Very important. Yes. Depending on how many you pick. You get to pick zero, one, two, or three of the abilities, uh, but you do you always do the ones you select in order. Much like Cryptic Command, the Much two, like two abilities Cryptic you Command. select, if they are different, happen in the yep. order that they are listed on the card. Ooh, yeah, this is one of those. Oh, this guy. Ones. Yeah. Oh, help say say hello to a sentient treasure token. Oh no! I, now here's the thing: I do have this Conclave Tribunal to take care of it, which is nice. Although I kind of wanted to use that to get rid of this Frogify on my uh, Alela. So I think next turn I'm just going to Kaya's Wrath. Yeah. And um, get get rid of him. And yeah, stop just that. So I'm just going to stem this bleeding right here from this treasure token. Uh, okay. Everyone asking about two to one wild cards in historic. We're not talking about that on this stream. I don't have any new information for anyone. I know you're all uh, going to keep asking the question. We are all very aware of the feedback on that. We're very aware that people are not happy about it. So the feedback has been heard. We don't have an answer for you on this stream today. Okay, cool. Hopefully we can get other questions in the chat because you've got Gavin here and he knows all about Brawl. And other stuff too. And other stuff. But mostly Gavin about knows Brawl. a lot of things. Yeah. So be careful you should ask them. him. You should ask him general knowledge questions and see if he can answer them. <laughs> ask him about food in Japan. I, yeah, I, I love trivia. Uh, this is awesome. I'm going to start beating down this golden egg. Ooh, let's uh, let's bring this thing. Bring me to life. Wake me up inside. Here we go. All right, so <laughs> going to exile this. Save me. Yeah. Hey now. All right, <laughs> we're attacking. <laughs> So this is using this new adventure mechanic. So check out this little interface if you haven't seen it yet. The way these cards work, you saw them up on the screen earlier, is you can either cast them for just the normal 3-mana 2-2 flyer, whatever that right-hand side is, or you can put them on an adventure. And when that happens, um, you pay this little cost up here in the tiny frame, this guy right here, and then you uh, get to do whatever this is. You exile the card, and you can just cast it as normal later on. And, and your opponent just did the same as thing. As my opponent just did. Um, it's a pretty cool little mechanic. You know, we were looking for something to represent that kind of, the fact that people went off on adventures all the time in, um, in these stories. And well, we found a mechanic that does just that. You literally send your creatures off on, on little adventures, which is cool. Uh, all right. One, I love, two, three, I love that your hand currently represents four different zones. Right. right. You've, got, you've got your main hand. You've got the chemistry's inside, which is in your graveyard, but can still be cast for, with uh, uh, Shoot, what's the mechanic name? It can still be cast with Jumpstart, and then you've got the uh, the got animating adventure. fairy on an adventure, and then you've got a Layla in the command zone. All it's right. Crazy. I um I but you know the great thing is too, Arena handles it so gracefully. Like, like it doesn't even look like it's that wild to deal with. You know, it's fantastic. Okay, now that we've gotten the two to one thing out of everybody's system, we're actually getting some good questions for Gavin. Oh great. Um, are they general knowledge questions? No, they are not. Stop it, Steve. <laughs> Uh, planeswalker. So, Gavin, oh, okay. did you talk? Uh, did you guys ever discuss having a planeswalker be the face of any of the brawl decks? Because planeswalkers can be your commander in brawl. You know, it, it was something that we talked about early, we, early on. We knew it was an option. But we thought for this, let's just go ahead and make four straightforward legendary creatures. Additionally, we wanted to make sure that. Um, these would all be cards that would appeal to commander players as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it, we want to make sure that these decks would not only be exciting for Brawl, but also for Commander. And I've seen a ton of excitement online, in fact, about a lot of these legendary cards for Commander. And in Commander, you can't use a, a, a Planeswalker as your Commander. So to create better interplay between the two, we did that here. But in future Brawl decks, I could see us going in a different direction. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, boy. Alayla, here we go. untapped. Time to start casting things like Scrabbling Claws, Making Tokens. Here we go. Here now we go. What's happening. Um, <laughs> great question, though. That's, that's a really great insight um, to point out. Uh, another question. Does the game show commander tax in any way? It does. You can't see it now because Gavin's commander well, is on the Well, you can't see it on, on his opponent's commander, though, I believe. Can, right. Uh, look, 
Um, no, you, okay. you can no, you can, can see, see it. You right? can see it. It says three up top. It's difficult to yeah. see on the on the stream. It, it's easier when Gavin's commander is in the command zone. We'll we'll point it out later. But basically, yes, you just you see what it would actually cost right. to cast it. So you do see the commander text. When you mouse over it, it shows the real card. Though. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we also had another question about adventures Sakara. being difficult to keep track of in real life. Mm. There is an answer for that. Uh, Sean, do you have access to the tokens file? By any chance, if not, the answer is okay. I can get access. Okay, but we're gonna we're gonna you, have you Sean know, look that up. I'll yeah. tell a little story, which is in in we were designing in R and D, we had the same exact question of like, okay, how are people gonna know what where your creatures are on adventure, what's yep. what's actually exiled? Because if you just exile an adventure card normally, if I take it out of, out of your graveyard with the scrabbling clause, for example, you can't recast it. It's not on an adventure. Yeah. And we actually made a little adventure zone token card that you can use for this exact purpose. Which is what our producer, Sean, is looking to see if he can pull up. So if he can find it, we'll put it up. But yes, basically we are creating, we have created a token that will be in the set and it will show the creature is being on an adventure. Yeah. A new zone for adventures, if you will. Oh no, so much death is about to happen right now, everybody. Goodbye, Good. creatures. Here come a, a the massacre. massacre. Yeah. One one massacre, please. Yep. Resolve all is the button I will now choose. Leaving only the massacre girl, I believe. Uh, yep. And I'm going to wait on other questions until Sean pulls up the adventure, because I know he found the image. So there it, there is. it is. On an adventure. So that's a token that you'll be able to get in booster packs. Uh, sh Gavin, do you know? I, I assume yes. But you can get this in foil in the collector boosters as well. I think the answer to that is actually no, but I can't okay. say that for sure. Okay. I can tell you that that the um, hold on a second, I can say this. We've shown off the borderless planeswalkers. Yes. 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 So the Garrick emblem does not show up in foil in the collector boosters. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. So I think it's only the actual tokens. Yep. Um, okay. Um, great question, though. Uh, was there ever any discussion about putting multiple possible commanders in the Brawl deck? So we do that for the commander decks. Every year. Yeah. Every year. There are multiple, obviously, 99 is more space than 60, but was that ever discussed? We did talk about that, absolutely. Um, one of the things about these decks is that there's fewer new cards in them, mm -hmm. and also every card that's legal in these decks is legal in standard. Yep. Um, and so because of that, we wanted to be, oh, you can't exile cards from the library with this, because of that, we wanted to be conscientious of... Um, you have to select the player. I'll select the player. That's yeah. what I'm doing wrong here. Uh, we wanted to be conscientious of um, how many cards we're adding in, and especially legendary creatures are often really strong build arounds. They have the potential to be very powerful. And so we decided to put those new cards in a different space instead. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we, we, did, we only put one per deck here, but we were able to really focus and hone it um, on that legendary creature as a result. So we did talk about it. Didn't end up going down that direction. Okay. Um, if the Brawl decks are successful, could we see more of these in the future? Absolutely. Um, this is, to me, this is all a big test. Let's see how, when we're firing Brawl on all cylinders, let's see how on it Brawl does. Cylinders. On Brawl cylinders. We're firing it on Brawl cylinders. <laughs> Let, Steve, let's see how it does. Steve. And then, yeah, if it's a huge success, let's keep doing it. Let's go forward with it. Um, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, one mana short of playing this and frog applying. So sad. Oh, well, I will have to settle with, um, I think, using this blood-soaked altar in Frogify, which sounds pretty awesome to me. Um, so I would love to, absolutely love to see that happen. Um, question from Net and 10 When will you open a booster pack of Eldraine on stream? Oh, that's a good question. We're going to do it on September 19th. Yeah. When the full set is nearly out. The full set is out on September 20th. So we have a stream on September 19th where kind of all bets are off. Yeah, we can don't talk miss about it. anything. Don't miss it. Uh, we'll show some new cards possibly, and we'll definitely open a uh, pack on yeah. stream. Uh, it's gonna be I like opening packs. It's yep. one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. Uh, Gavin. Hello. Will Brawl have a different ban list for Paper and Magic the Gathering Arena like Standard does with Best of One and Best of Three? Um, theoretically, it's possible. Currently, we hope we don't have to ban anything in Brawl. That would yeah. be our, our goal. You know, last time around, we had a real unfortunate opening with Brawl, where Brawl, Brawl which, which Brawl. come on, come, how is that even possible? <laughs> how is it even possible that Brawl was the card that was a problem in Brawl? With a name like that, it was just ridiculous. Anyway, um, yes, uh, it, is, it is possible, but our hope is, of course, we don't have to, don't have to ban anything yep. in, in Brawl. So um, that's what I would like to believe is true, and we'll just kind of see how that, how that goes. 
Um, question from Daniel from Brazil 3. Can I use a Layla in a construct deck? I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. You do you. Uh, um, oh, if they mean constructed, like standard, absolutely. Yeah. All the cards in Brawl are legal and standard, so you are more than yeah. welcome to go ahead and, and put them in those decks and play with them. thing is, Alayla also works in a construct deck, so question so could, could go either way. Could go either way. Could yeah. be either one. We have no way of knowing. Uh, this from Michael Lord. Um, oops, where'd it go? Do, 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 do. Uh, the Brawl decks feel kind of like Planeswalker decks. Is that a reasonable comparison, and that's meant to be a positive comparison? Well, I mean, they are meant to be kind of introductory to the format, so they're similar in that regard. You know, you can pick one up, play it off the shelf, and be able to modify it with your own stuff. But I would say these are substantially stronger than a Planeswalker deck. Mm -hmm. While they're both meant to enter you into the format, Brawl decks are full of rares, and there's even some dual lands running around in there, and all kinds of stuff. So... Um, some of that, yes, there's some similarities, but you know, if you look at this board state that we have right now, this is not a board state I would expect to show up in a Planeswalker, Planeswalker deck, for deck. example. Yep. The complexity level is quite a bit higher, right. I'd say. Right. Um, Zool asks, did a Watsi employee bake those cookies for yesterday's stream, or did you hire a baker slash model? It was a Wizards of the Coast employee. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do our own cookies. <laughs> Uh, duh, 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 duh. Gavin, you're not doing too well here, man. I feel like I'm doing great. <laughs> How <laughs> difficult is it to answer questions while playing? Difficult. Very, very, very extremely, very extremely difficult. difficult. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm barely paying attention to what Gavin's doing on stream. I remember asking Nate Price that same question when he used to do the uh, arena streams, and yeah. he was like, "Yeah, it's real hard." It, you know, people always watch streamers and think like, oh, wow, they made a mistake or whatever. But it's like, well, I'm trying to be entertaining and talk at the same time and answer all these questions. Yeah. Entertain um, us, Gavin. Uh, dance, Gavin, dance. <laughs> uh, that Zachary asks, Hello, Smothering Zachary. Tithe is a card that seems better in a four-player brawl game. Do you design these decks around 1v1 games or four-player? These decks are mostly designed for multiplayer. Mm -hmm. We did make a few tweaks actually to the decks to account for them being one-on-one -on, -one on Brawl. We took a few cards um, that only reference multiple opponents out of the decks, for example. Um, so you know, we think Brawl in general is at its best with four players, but we wanted to make sure that, that Arena still have this awesome one-on-one -on -one experience. So like I said, we made, made a few tweaks to it. Yep. Um, but yeah, in general, uh, I recommend playing multiplayer. And Smothering Tithe, as you can see here, still totally fine. Yeah, still doing game. pretty well. Yeah. It's been doing just fine, I would say. Um, is Brawl ranked? No, it is not. This is a special event called the Eldraine Courtside Brawl. Mm -hmm. You can access it, I believe, from the uh, front screen of Arena. So as soon as you log in, there should be a little box that says Eldraine Courtside Brawl. Yep. Click on it. You can enter no entry fee, and, uh, and you can just play, play the pre-constructed decks, have some fun, earn some uh, four ofs of some uncommons coming up for a Throne of Eldraine. Yep. All right, everyone. No guts, no glory. We're going, we're going down into two. Whoa, Do boy. It. Oh, boy. I mean, Safar has lifelink, so I don't feel all that. Yeah, so I... Well, if they, get, they could get rid of Safara. Right, it I'm, is possible. I'm dead to a removal spell. But, uh... Because Massacre Girl. Yeah. But, hey, well, and also just because that would be pretty bad Yeah. for me. But, hey, it's been, been a <laughs> fun back and forth. <laughs> if they don't have a removal spell, though, I feel really, really good here. All right. This is what it all comes down to. Can they remove Safara? We've kind of ground out a little bit. Maybe, maybe you get back into it. We'll find out. Uh, While well, we're waiting for that, let's brawl MTG. Great name. Question. Brawl decks play great. Any update on when we'll be able to play our own decks in brawl? Mm. Question mark. September 26th. Question. So we're actually going to have a state of the game on September 19th yep. that is going to talk about uh, when you can play brawl outside this event. Oh, I'm, I'm also very excited for that. Yep. Ooh, Kaya's Wrath. Interesting. Your, your stuff was indestructible, though, except for Safara. Oh, I'll, no. I'll, I'll take it. Oh, no. Thanks, Safara. Mm. And there's a Layla back, back at it again. Guess who's back? That Smothering Tithe. Back again. That Smothering Tithe has just doing, provided them with so much mana. Doing work. So they're out of cards, though. That's the good news. And so you can Chemister's Insight here. I can Chemister's like. Insight. 
Um, I'm definitely not going to activate Blood, Blood Soaked Altar. I'll tell you the thing I that will not seems, do. That seems bad. Don't do that. Three, four, five, six. I think I'm going to cast this Alela, though. I think that's what I want to do. Once again, the, the big difference between Commander and Singleton is you, is you always have this Commander. So um, it says Vigilance, right? So I'm just going to serve in with both these. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Question. All of the cards in the Brawl Precon are available in Draft Boosters, correct? No. No. That is not, that is not accurate. Um, so... Many of the cards in the Brawl Precons are available in the Draft Boosters, but the Brawl-specific cards are, and those are cards that are numbered above oh, that was, anything I'm, numbered 303 or higher. Missed, missed some sorry. points of damage there, did you? Anything numbered 265 or higher is not found uh Necess no, that's, is not that's necessarily issues. found. Not in the necessarily draft found in the draft booster. If it is a brawl only card, so the commanders, things like arcane signet, command, command tower, tower yeah. are brawl are brawl specific things. Those can be found in the collector booster mm -hmm. and in the brawl product, but not in the draft booster. Right, right. And you, um, there's 20 of those cards in total. Yes, yeah. for reference. And I just missed casually missed two damage on the last turn for everyone watching. Yes, I know that happens. So there, there are twenty apologize. of those cards total. Are those evenly split between they're, they're decks? They're evenly Gavin? split. Um, Command Tower is in all of the decks. Mm -hmm. um, Arcane Signet, Arcan I believe, is also in all Arcan of the decks. Arcane Signet's in all the decks, and then um, the others. There's two car or four cards that are in two decks apiece. Got it. Um, so, uh, Gavin, are you worried about Shulane and Commander? Um, I'm. I think it'll be a strong commander. Mm -hmm. I'm not too worried about it being too powerful or anything like that. Yep. Um, but I think it'll definitely be a strong commander. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of really powerful commanders out there, so we'll see. But I'm not too not too concerned about that at the moment. Oh, how the tides have turned! All right, now we're tied four up. Oh boy. And I think it's time for Layla to come back out once more upon the breach. That's a lot of mana. Um, yep. And these Layla mirror matches and the two lane mirror matches too can get pretty pretty grindy. So you will get up these points. You've got ten mana, and now it all kind of comes down to, to what they can do on this. What turn. does your opponent have? They have an emergence zone, so I gotta be careful about that. They can play things at instant speed. Uh, Gavin, what uh, what happens to an adventure? Cha Ching, <laughs> sorry, really excited. Won, won that game. <laughs> you all thought I was over for. <laughs> I thought I it was over. I missed a bunch of damage. Doesn't matter. Still good enough to win. Uh, how much time do we have? We have 23 minutes. All right, I'm going to switch to the Knight's deck because it tends to be a little on the faster side. Right. Uh, what happens to an adventure card if the instant or sorcery part is countered? Does it go to the graveyard or exile? Hmm. Uh, it goes to the graveyard, I believe. Yes, correct yeah. answer. Ooh. Good job, Gavin. Ding. You passed the test. Uh, yeah, it, the putting it in exile on the little adventure thing is part of the resolution of the adventure spell. Right, right. Uh, do, 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 do. I mean, it's basically like when you put it on the stack, it's like any other thing that you're casting for the most part. So, you know, so can I talk about a little bit about the design of these decks while Absolutely. we queue up the next yeah. game here? So it was really cool. Um, it was a really cool thing, actually, where um, we actually worked with some outside designers to help create the Brawl deck. So I was the architect on it, and then Melissa was the, the lead designer. Um, but then she worked with uh, four people from outside Wizards to help create these decks. Um, mm -hmm. Henry Davis, Stephanie Shebel, um, Emma Handy, and um, uh, Jeremy Geist from The Great Designer Search 3, all people who have a name somewhere in the Magic community. And it was really a way to help get community involvement in on these decks that was really, really, really cool. And so um, we brought them in and did some great work. And every deck kind of feels a little bit like it's um, like the person who built it, which is really, really fun. So. I, every deck has its own personality, and I, I really appreciate that. I wrote an article this week. You can go check more out on Daily MTG. Um, but now, yeah, let's hop in back into this here. We're going to go for the Knight's Charge. So, you know, I've actually I've heard of some notes online about people saying they can't win with the Knight's Charge deck. So Let's see if we can dispel Prove that myth. Prove me wrong, I, Gavin. I, I, I've, I've rattled wrong. off a bunch of wins with this deck. <laughs> you know, to me, I think the key is you're playing a longer game aggressive deck, and playing your commander is incredibly important. Yep. So you really want to make sure, like, if you have an opening hand with three or four lands, like, that's, that's okay. You need those lands in the long game. You're not a traditional aggro deck. This hand is definitely getting mulligan. I don't have any white mana. Yep. I only have two lands. So I'll take but you can beat. play Colossus Hammer, a Colossal Hammer on turn one, Gavin. And now, this is a hand I'll keep. Look, we have four lands. Love that Knight of the nice Ebon Legion curve. on turn yeah. one, too. Yeah, this it's is a, a really great turn one play. play. This card, Order of Midnight, is incredibly powerful as well. Ooh. Corpse Knight is here. Hey, Look yeah. at all these knights. Must be knights. 
Ooh. Say good night. Oh boy, there's two of you. <laughs> um, Gavin, will the Brawl Commanders have that frame in paper? Uh, the frame, the arena frame. It it will not have. It will not be glowing. I'll, I'll tell you that much. Um, <laughs> but it's the regular it, legendary. Actually, the regular legendary frame. Yeah. We can. Okay. Uh, we'll, we we might be able to show that on uh, on camera later because yeah. we've got we've got the deck right there. We got a moment yep. here. I'll uh, I'll crack this open and I'll show you all kind of uh, what this all looks like. I'm gonna quickly try and dispatch my opponent here. Uh, can we have an option in the arena store to buy the brawl precon decks for golds or gems? Um, I'm not entirely clear on arena's plans. Yeah, we don't we don't that. actually work on the arena team. But some, sometimes we sometimes even, sometimes but, they tell um, us stuff. But, I, I yeah. would ask that question of the MTG Arena Twitter account at MTG Arena or in the arena beta forums. Oops. Uh, they should be able to answer that question there uh, or wait for the state of the game on the 19th. Because uh, I'm just, I'm honestly not 100%. I don't know. I, yeah. I think the answer is yes, but I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't quote me, and we'll uh, we'll find out. We'll find out together. I may go ask someone after the stream. Um, are the Brawl Precon exclusive cards legal in standard, Gavin? Yes. Yes, they absolutely are. So if you think you craft it, go ahead and, and play these guys. Um, they're all all standard legal cards. Um, okay, this one's asking about the future, so let's change it into a hypothetical. Lore-wise, lore if you made more Brawl decks, would they always be on the planes of standard, or would you take liberties like with the Commander decks that feature cards from all of Magic's lore? I think it's entirely possible we could do either, right? If we wanted to... To feature stuff from other planes, we could get that in there. Mm -hmm. Brawl is standard legal, so of course the majority of your decks would still be Brawl uh, standard focus cards. Um, but yeah, there's, there's no reason why we couldn't do that here. Okay. Um, I feel so embarrassed. I just threw away a creature last turn because I didn't play my land first. It's been nothing but nothing but a disaster. It's answering questions and talking. At the yeah, same it's time. tough. It's difficult. But if I still win, I'll feel very validated about winning with the the nice deck people have been having trouble with. Evolution Sage. Does the gingerbread lady in the trailer have a name? Uh, not officially. But I, I know that I know that the MTG Arena account is actually soliciting uh, possible names for that character. There you go. So tweet at MTG Arena. Look for the thread. It's there. Oh my, hey, everyone. Next turn uh, might be amazing. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Okay, if, if I could do this, I'm going to feel like a genius. <laughs> <laughs> if I play Sergwin next turn and then and get equip to Colossus equip Hammer Colossus Hammer, Hammer. oh boy, I think it's gonna happen. Oh boy! Oh, uh, except this is oh, it's non-token creature though, right? So I yep. think I think yeah. I get to do this. We'll find out. I think I get to put Colossus Hammer on Order of Midnight and crunch my opponent for twelve points of damage in the air. We'll find out. Well, not in the air because Colossus Colossus Hammer makes it oh, lose no! flying. Oh no! Makes it lose flying. Oh, he just can't. I'll put on Bells of Brawl, I guess. Yeah. So he has to leave the or they have to leave their creature untapped here. Well, that's a. You little should still sad. do it. We're still, oh, it's, I mean, it's still happening. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Colossal, colossal hammer equipped for zero, pretty darn good. I still feel, I still feel good about this. Plus, this is menace, so that they're forced to block this as well. Yeah. Equip knight zero, baby. Bell of the brawl wielding a colossus hammer. In brawl, nonetheless. Truly, the most bell of the brawl I could imagine. <laughs> uh, yes. The I most bell. Uh, it's truly a tale as old as time. Drop this. Now, Tagic Legion says this is a, a, um, importantly a card that is not actually in the um, in the in the uh, paper brawl in, deck. In the paper brawl decks, right? Good to know. Um, there's Tagic and Shivan Dragon are only in this version, just because there are two other cards you had to remove. And you can go find on a daily MTG what those what those are. Cool. Uh, Gavin, what is the paper release date for the brawl deck? Um, that releases on the same exact day the rest of Throne of Eldrian releases. So you can go into your store and pick them up right away, which is really October exciting. October 4th. 4. Yep. 10-4. Over and out. Uh, yeah, baby. Knights, get there. <laughs> <laughs> Threw away my one drop. Still didn't matter. <laughs> Colossal. Colossus Hammer. Getting it done. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, there's two pretty good games here. Oh, thanks. Got me some XP. No problem. Love it. Um, we did it. Gavin, what's the timeline on creating the Brawl product? Is the set proper pretty much done by the time you started making it? We actually worked in tandem. It was pretty cool. Uh, Melissa was both on the Throne of Eldraine team mm -hmm. 
as well as on the Brawl deck team, which was really important. We wanted to choose her in part for, for that reason, because she could relay information between the two. Mm -hmm. So as things were happening on the main team, she could craft the Brawl decks around it and so on and so forth. Because the Brawl decks, actually all four of the decks, take themes from the main set in some way. You've got the Jund Sacrifice stack, which plays with food and a lot of the other sacrifice creatures going on there. You've got the Alela Artifacts and Enchantment stack, which has to do with um, the Artifact and Enchantment sub-theme running throughout all of this. Mm -hmm. You've got the Knights deck, which, well, of course, there's lots of Knights in the set, all, all the different courts of, of Eldraine. And then you've got um, Chulain, who is, does, does a lot with adventures. There's many adventuring cards in that deck. It's really good with that kind of theme. So all four decks were kind of crafted out of some of the main Throne of Eldraine themes in the first place. So it was really great having Melissa be able to walk between the worlds of guiding the, the Brawl deck design and the set design. Now, Gavin, talk to me about how these decks were named, because I personally am very disappointed that you didn't take the opportunity to do a pun with the Knights deck, you know, like knight, Knights to Meet You. Um, uh, they don't let me name things anymore, Steve. Summer Knights, <laughs> you know. They, uh, I've named... That's also why they don't let you name things either, Steve. I mean, look, look, the, they could. There's a world... And they never will with that attitude, Blake, I'm just saying. Yeah. You gotta try. I got to name yeah. Endless Atlas from C18, that was a card I named, and then there's a few cards aren't out yet that I've named, but nice. the, in general they don't let me nice. name the cards. Uh, Gavin, technically could one take a Brawl deck to a standard FNM but Command Tower and Arcane Signet would just do nothing. Absolutely. Correct? You yeah. can play those cards in your local FNM. Um, the, all, one of the other things about these decks is because they're all built around themes of Eldraine, mm -hmm. the idea was you could actually buy one, get a few Eldraine boosters, and make some tweaks to have a fine standard deck. Now, it's not going to be top level tournament competitive, but it'll be enough to get you started down the path of having that deck, right? Because all four of these themes are things that can work in standard at some level. Like, we think there'll be a strong Knights deck, we think there'll be a strong Sacrifice deck, and so on. So it kind of points you in the right direction. They're not, they're not Challenger decks, they're not intended to be Challenger decks, but they do give you a great starting point to hop into a standard tournament with, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Okay. We should. I, I want to uh, see what's in this. Can we open let's, this? Let's let's crack. Let's, let's crack that. that. So I got see a what's fresh in one. Chew Lane, my boy Chew Lane, right here. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so exciting. I love this. So this is what the brawl packaging looks like. If you haven't seen it, we got a, a tight up on this guy, right? Let's right go here. to the single for the brawl deck. Bring her on in. So here it is. Ooh, wild bounty. Check that out. On the back, it says some some important words. Chew Lane's magical storytelling conveys secret wisdom to all who hear it. Gather an, an audience of creatures and get tons of value, now we're talking, from Chu Lin's abilities, then send them forth to overwhelm your opponents. Really cool. So when, when you crack this thing open, let's, uh, let's see what we got. I'm just going to be mean to this packaging. Sorry, package. Because I want to get all the you stuff out for sweet, you. You contain sweet, sweet cards inside of you. Right, so we open it up. We've got a few things, including a brand new component none of you folks have really seen before. So we've got an, this insert. I won't get into the insert here right now, but it does talk about um, all the various um, decks and a bit about the legendary creatures, which is really cool. But inside here... Let me just take this, put this down here. Yep. Inside this little box, we've got... the foil card hanging out on front. The, the commander, as it were, of the Brawl deck. This deck box, and every uh, one of these deck boxes has the face of its commander on it. So this is the Chulane special one, but everyone has its, its own specialty. And then inside, you get the sealed um, the sealed version of the deck, which I won't open here, but all the cards are in there. But another really cool new component is this thing. Oh, you get a divider for your deck, because that's, you know, deck divided. Um, but um, this is this new thing called the Life Wheel. This is a new life tracker. It's pretty cool. Uh, it fits inside a deck box. So unlike dice, which you know don't really fit in deck boxes a lot of the time, it can be a little unwieldy. This this guy's here. So you can just turn it like this, and it'll move um, your life up and down. And it's double sided. So because I want to make sure it'd be good in, enough in Commander, you can use it in both ways. It counts all the way from one to forty. So this is a, a method that can easily fit in a deck box that will count from 1 to 40 no matter what format you're playing. So you know you start here on the, uh, on the 20, or tw and then you can flip it right over, and you're on the 21, and you can go all the way up to 40. So this is pretty cool. Um, you know, in an uh, R&D, we normally use D20s to keep track of our life totals. We just have them lying around. And I brought a bunch of these into the R&D area, and we just started using these instead, and we've yeah. been having a blast with them. They're so much easier to carry around. They fit in your hand super well. You can hold them like this. You can use your thumb to adjust your life total up and down. Anyway, I'm stoked about these, and hopefully uh, you enjoy them too. Yep. Uh, Gavin, it's, you can 
can you show the size difference? Can that deck fit in there sleeved? Can this deck fit in here sleeved? Um, well, so inside, the answer is yes. Inside, we open it, is this spacer, which looks um, like a white piece of cardboard because it is. So if you take that out, <laughs> uh, that's there to make sure that the deck doesn't get damaged in transit or anything. Yep. But if you take that out, it'll fit in here sleeve. There's tons of extra space. If you see, there's tons of extra space lying around in here. So I mean, if you quadruple sleeve it, it might not. Yeah. Right. I, I can't make yeah. any guarantees, <laughs> but if you use normal sleeves, um, if you put them in here, you can get it all fit in. And, and then when you put it, you can put this little divider in here, right, it looks like? Yep, that and divider. Then, uh, and then Shulane goes Shulane in there. Shulane goes in. And, and then we got you this got nice little life, life tracker. There you go. Perfect. And you're, you're all, ready, all ready to go and brawl. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, we got a question earlier about when do more previews start? Huh. Funny um, you should ask. There is an article up on Daily MTG today that says where to find Throne of Eldraine previews. Mm -hmm. And that lists out all the dates and locations for all the places that previews are going to be. So there's going to be some previews tomorrow on a French website. And then on Monday is when kind of the floodgates open and they're just all over the place. When the clock strikes midnight, as it were. I'm so excited. Probably for, a little after. Probably after. Uh, that, probably after yeah. that, but yeah. Uh, I mean, I have to say, we put so much work into this set. I've wanted to do this set for ages. Rosewater's wanted to do this set for ages. Mm -hmm. And as it all came together, seeing the art come in, which I know you all are already loving, seeing the cards come in, being able to build all these new products, to me, like, it feels like sometimes you enter a new phase, right? With many me major media properties, they'll enter different phases. Oh, yeah, like I, when you go from upkeep to draw. Yeah, yes, exactly yeah. like that, Steve. Yeah. And to me, Throne of Eldraine feels like the next phase of Magic. We've got collector boosters, we've got the new Brawl format, we've got all the new different showcase and extended art frames. Like, everything is here. This is huge for Magic. And um, I, I just, I, I'm so excited about the new, new direction. Plus, I mean, I cannot say anything yet or Blake will strangle me, but um, the, the upcoming sets for next year are super cool, too, that we announced. So yeah. that'll be... Um, we can say their names. Those were, yes. those were announced. Theros yeah. Beyond Death, <laughs> Ikoria, Lair of Behemoths. Zendikar, uh, Zendikar rising. Zendikar rising, yeah. And of course. Have we, have we announced the, uh, the three letter code? Codes no, we have we not. Not yet. Then I will not, not tell you yet. what they are. I actually don't know what they are. Yeah. And Theros Beyond Death was, Death was pretty funny. I saw it. It, someone it, say, it, It's not TBD. Is, <laughs> I'll tell you, it's <laughs> yeah. not TBD. Yeah. We, we thought of that. Um, I can tell you what it is, but we did. We did okay. think it was fun. It was funny that it, that those were uh, were those were the initials. We Do you want to get to a couple questions yes. people had? So we're gonna take a break from playing. Fire off more questions. Yes. Are the brawl decks in addition to? or instead of Planeswalker decks? We are still doing Planeswalker decks this time around. Um, so you can expect to have your two Planeswalker decks in store. They're still great to learn with. We absolutely recommend learning with Planeswalker decks. So mm -hmm. It's got you know, all the good stuff inside. But I think Brawl decks are also a fantastic way to kind of hop into it, right? Uh, yeah. Magic is a very social game. And if you're able to sit at a table of four players and play Brawl with them, even if you're still kind of new and learning the ropes, they'll help walk you through that opening game. But yes, of course, Planeswalker decks are still available. And as always, if you have a friend who wants to learn, go into your, your local store and ask for the welcome decks too, the little 30-card welcome decks. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to learn how to play Magic. Okay. Uh, are you worried that Brawl will be too Planeswalker heavy since it will come to Arena when Dominaria rotates but with War of the Spark staying? You know, I think there'll definitely be a lot of Planeswalkers there. But one of the cool parts about Brawl is you get to play with Planeswalkers as your commanders. You can't do that in normal commander. You can do that in Brawl. And I looked down the list, and we started you know, building some decks with the War of the, of the Spark Planeswalkers. There, there's a lot of strong ones. Some of them don't quite make the cut. Some of them do. And I'll be interested to see how they arise. But I think there's a great little metagame there of, you know, in a four-player game, Planeswalkers are a little, a little weak to creatures. And so if you start putting more creatures in your deck, or you start attacking, or you're getting up on the Planeswalker player, you can kind of take it down. Mm -hmm. I could see Planeswalkers being very effective in the one-on-one -on -one arena format because you always have access to this Planeswalker, but uh, time will tell, I suppose. <laughs> so build it up, try it. And you know you want to make your, your uh, Mawu or your uh, Jang? Yangu. Yeah, yeah. Jang Yangu, yeah. Jang Yangu Mawu deck. Like that, that's awesome. I'm build that, that deck right now. Yeah. That sounds like so much fun. Um, with, pl uh, let's see. With Planeswalker decks, Brawl decks, and the regular standard set, are there like 450 cards in total under the banner of Eldraine? It's less than it's less than 400. I don't remember the exact mm, highest collector number off the top of my head. I don't know if you do. But yeah, so I don't know the top end of the collector numbers. As far as unique cards... Unique it, cards is much lower. Unique yeah. cards is normal set size. 
plus the 20 Brawl cards, plus, you know, the Planeswalker deck cards and a couple yeah. others out there in the buy box. But it's not that much larger than our normal set. Right. Because of all the variants, if you want to collect everything in the set, right. then it goes really, really, really high. And we yeah. actually came up with a new convention for collector numbers um, to make sure that we could go that high. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a little bit different. But if you're just looking about unique cards, it's not that much larger than our normal set. Yeah. So for in the fact, main... it's actually just probably the number of brawl cards that yeah. we that we added. And if you look at the collector numbers on the bottom, if it's in the main set, it will say number out of right. 264, I think. And if it's not in the main set, yeah, if we can zoom in. So on if you that, look, look it's, at it's, it's it's pretty small, so we may or may not be able to if see. If you it. zoom in real tight on. Shulane. Oh, here or we, we can just so do that. Or we can do that. Or we can do the good <laughs> solution that our technical director so came up with rather than zooming in on a tiny Sir card. Gwen, you can see in the bottom left, 330. So if it is not in the main set and not a normal framed card, then it will have that number right there where it doesn't say out of anything. Right. Yeah. Because we were doing this thing for the while for a while with the past few sets where it kind of lied to you. The Planeswalker decks would be like card 290 out of 280 or something, yeah. which doesn't make a lot of sense. So given that we were adding in a bunch more variants here, we decided to just change the numbering system to something a little more conventional that didn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, do we know what the buy a box promo is? We do. We, we do. We do. We're aware. We know. The, you the don't know yet. The general public does not. But there, we can't say that there is a buy box. There promo. is a buy box. There is one. It, it, it's yeah. great. You'll know it as soon, and it's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. And, Gavin, if you buy a box... You get the buy a box promo, while supplies last. Yeah, while supplies last. What can you also get while supplies last? Well, oh, this is super. Have we announced this yet? Are we announcing it right now? I I feel like maybe I, I, I don't know. Like, well, we're gonna, gonna say we're now. gonna say it. We're gonna say it. I'm now. super excited to announce this. Once again, we stress while supplies last on this. But if you buy a booster box, you not only get the buy a box promo, but you also get a collector booster, mm -hmm. which is super exciting. Like to me, like I said earlier. Opening up that collector booster is just like all this amazing stuff in your hands. Like an, hearing it is one thing, but seeing opening it, it up yeah. and yeah. seeing a bunch of alt art cards, a guaranteed foil rare, a mythic rare, a borderless card, it is gorgeous. Pre-order a box now because you will get a bonus collector booster on top of now it. Now we should stress that this is uh, pre-ordering for buying a box at WPN stores only. Correct. Yes. WPN Correct. stores only. So if you buy this on Amazon, you won't get a collector booster. You won't get the buy a box Correct. promo. You have to order it through a WPN store. And, yep. Yeah, we really wanted to yeah. both you know support our stores. That's really really important to us, as well as like the experience of getting that pack and cracking it and seeing it all right there along yeah. with your box is so powerful. So um, while supplies last, go and grab that. While supplies last. Yeah. And, and this is, again, we're still doing the thing where you can pre-order a box and pick it up at pre-release mm -hmm. at your local game store. So please ask, call your local game stores, go visit your local game stores, play Brawl, and then ask about, uh, ask about this program. Make sure that they have some. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Is the buy a box promo as busted as Nexus? I'm going to say no. Um, n I it's, it's don't. It's super cool. It's, it's super cool. It's... Can I, uh, We're not no. going to say anything else about uh, it. It's, it's, You're going to have to wait cool. and see. We answered, we yeah. answered the question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can I say this? <laughs> uh, no. No, okay. No. okay. All right. They might have it. heard me because you they, they uh, might have heard because no, you whispered fair. really close to the microphone. That's fair. close to the microphone. Let's see if does chat figure it out. I don't know. It'll I don't know. Fun. We'll see. Um, are the collector booster and draft booster buy a box promos the same? Uh, I don't believe collector boosters come with the buy a box promo. I, I don't want to say anything on that. I, I'm not 100% certain. Yeah. Uh, is the buy a box promo Garrick on Arena? So Arena is a little different. It's it, instead of buy a box, there's a pre-order for forty nine ninety nine, uh, and you get a bunch of packs. <coughs> excuse me, and you do get a Garrick. Yeah, yeah. On Arena. On Arena. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. We are almost out of time, so I want to make sure we get any questions for Gavin since he's. Here. Uh, one thing I'll say while yes. you're looking for questions is just we put a lot of work into these brawl decks. We're still we wanted to launch it in earnest and see how it did. All your feedback is going to be vital to that. So please send it our way. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up wherever you can find me. If you see me at a convention, come and say hello. And I'd love to get your thoughts on it. And in general, I hope you have a blast going to go build for the format, playing it on Arena, trying it out. I know I've had a lot of fun. Like even just playing those few games there, that those, that was a great time. The reception so far has been fantastic. So please let me know what you think, and um, love to keep doing this in the future. 
Uh, we mentioned this earlier, but it is a good question. Will there be any sanctioned Brawl events for the release of the set at WPM stores? Yeah, absolutely. So a few weeks after the set releases, we have a kind of a Brawl event happening in stores. So talk to your, your local store about it. But there will be a Brawl event where you can, you can come in, bring your Brawl decks, or just grab a Brawl deck off the shelf and play and have a blast. Yep. Uh, that is all the time we have. I was going to reiterate what's in the boosters again, but just quick rehash. Draft boosters have the Borderless Planeswalkers and Adventure Frames, and the Collector boosters have the, yeah, those things. That's Those you can find in Draft boosters. And the next one, these you can only find in Collector boosters. So that covers it. Thank you, Gavin, uh, for being here. Uh, thank you, Steve, for doing the news and the puns. And we'll be back next week uh, with our own Throne of Eldraine preview. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have at least Andrew Brown's going to be here and maybe someone else. Who knows? Who knows? We'll Big see. mystery. We'll see who shows up. Anything Paul, could happen. Paul Chion just walked into the studio the other week and was like, that hey, was guys, I'm going to be on that your show. That was the best. He might uh, do that again. Who yeah. knows? So we'll talk with some people from Studio X about Throne of Eldraine next week. Uh, until then, have a good weekend. Thank you all, and have a blast with Brawl.